Good morning. Hi. It's good to see you this morning as we gather together for worship, as we uh, prepare our, our hearts and minds to, to serve God this week, as we prepare to give God the glory. Just thank you for being here as we celebrate and as we worship. I have some announcements that I'd like to share with you this morning. Uh, summer worship starts when? Who can tell me? Next Sunday. Next Sunday is our summer schedule. Yes. And uh, so that means if you want to be in the contemporary worship service, you have to be here at 1015. That's when we have our worship service uh, next Sunday here in the Great Hall is 1015. If you're going to the traditional service, uh, it begins uh, with an optional hymn sing at 905. Uh, so you can be there for, at 9.05 for that, or, and then 9.15 is the traditional worship service in the sanctuary. So they're actually at this time slot, and then we, uh, we're at 10.15 here. We're still looking for people to sign up on a list of those who are willing to uh, bring other people to church. It's not, we're not asking you to do that every day or every Sunday uh, all year long, but occasionally we have somebody who's looking for a ride. Uh, and so we would ask you to, uh, uh, to get on a list for us so that we might be able to... Uh, to uh, get those people to church. We're also looking for additional uh, counters to help uh, count the offering after uh, church on Sunday mornings. Uh, Linda Babcock is our contact for that. Uh, there is a Red Cross blood drive here on June 12th. That's coming up pretty quick, so if you uh, can donate, please sign up. Uh, there's information about that also in the mainstay. We're at the very end of No Baby Wet Behind month, uh, so you know that back there is a bassinet. <laughs> Excuse me. In that bassinet, we're looking for diapers and wipes and other things. So please support that as we help out those who uh, uh, need that kind of assistance. Family Promise has uh, ministry opportunities that are, are needed uh, to be taken care of. Please look at the mainstay for that. Uh, the t-shirt campaign, uh, that was over uh, last Sunday at midnight, and uh, we had a goal of selling 150 shirts, and we sold 154 so we, uh, we made our goal, uh, including donations. We raised $2,030.68. Uh, T-shirt Sunday is going to be June 25th. On that Sunday, we're asking you to wear the T-shirts to uh, worship on Sunday morning, and we're going to try and get a group shot with everybody who has the T-shirts from both congregations. Um, we have uh, coming up on the June 24th is the BYO Box Sleepout. Bring your own box sleepout. It's here at the church on Saturday, June 24th, and Mike, don't look too concerned. This is not necessarily for the kids. This is actually an adult thing. Um, did you want to say anything about it, Linda, or just read? Mm. Absolutely, thank, thank you. you. For, For all these announcements, more, check the mainstay. Is there any other? Linda. Uh, right after worship today, uh, we're going to work with young people with ribbons. Uh, if you want to participate in Pentecost Sunday, uh, working with ribbons, we're going to do that, work on that right after worship for maybe five, ten minutes. Thank, thank you. you. Let's, Let's stand, stand together, together for the call for worship. Living God's love. Let that love be poured out for all God's people. Bring hope and peace to all you meet. We are all to be God's witnesses. Celebrate and rejoice. Praise be to God who has called, healed, and given us the ministry of peace. Amen. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. You're marvelous. You're marvelous and you're glorious. Your love has made me victorious. 
You took away the fear in us. Now we praise you because you can deliver us. There ain't no stopping us. Now. Devil, there ain't no blocking us. Now, come on and clap your hands with us. Come on, put those hands together. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an You're marvelous God. and you're glorious. You're marvelous and you're glorious. Your love has made me victorious. You took away the fear in us. Now we praise you because you can deliver us. There ain't no stopping us. Now. Devil, there ain't no blocking us. Now, come on, clap your hands with us. Come on, clap those hands. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Sing, he reigns. 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 He reigns forever. Forever and ever. He reigns. He reigns. He reigns. He reigns. He reigns. He reigns forever. Forever and ever. He reigns, he reigns, he reigns forever and ever, forever and ever. He reigns, he reigns, he reigns forever, forever and ever. He reigns, he reigns, he reigns. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Sometimes it feels like I'm watching from the outside. Sometimes it feels like I'm breathing. But am I alive? I won't keep searching for answers that aren't here to find. All I know, all I know is I'm not home yet. This is not where I come falling down on me and when I'm lost in the current of a raging sea I have this blessed assurance holding me all I know
All I know is I'm not home yet. All I know is I'm not home yet. This is not where I belong. Take this world and give me Jesus. This is not where I It's going to be good because it's the last one for a while. No, it's, I'll, I'll make it a long introduction. It is almost 9.30 and time now for the kids to go to Sunday, Sunday, Sunday school. <laughs> It'll be a while before we get to say that one, right? Seems like all I could see was the struggle Haunted by ghosts that lived in my past Bound up in shackles of all my failures Wondering how long is this gonna last? Then you look at this prisoner and say to me, son, stop fighting a fight that's already been won. I am redeemed. You set me free. So I'll shake off these heavy chains, wipe away every stain. I'm not who I used to be. I am redeemed. All my life I have been cold, unworthy. The voice of my shame and regret But when I hear you whisper Child, lift up your head I remember, oh God You're not done with me yet I am redeemed You set me free So I'll shake off these heavy chains, wipe away every stain. I'm not who I used to be, because I don't have to be the old man inside of me, because his day is long dead and gone, because I've got a new name, a new life, I'm not the same, and a hope that will carry me home. I am redeemed, you set me free, so I'll shake off these heavy chains, wipe away every stain, cause I'm not who I used to be, I am redeemed, you set me free. So I'll shake off these heavy chains. 
chains Wipe away every stain I'm not who I used to be Oh God, I'm not who I used to be Jesus, I'm not who I used to be I am redeemed Thank God redeemed Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. Let's pray. Gracious God. God of amazing light and power in our lives. We come here, we gather here this morning to learn more about you, to learn more about us, to learn more about your will for us as you have called us to be your people and you send us into the world. Lord, before we go out into the world, we ask you to heal our wounds, lift our spirits, give us the courage and confidence we need to boldly serve you in all that we do. Pour the power of your Holy Spirit down upon us that we might serve you in ways that change this world. For that's the power that you have. Use us. We pray this in the name of your Son, whom you gave to us so freely and with great love, Jesus the Christ. Amen. You're the God of the city. You're the king of these people. You're the Lord of this nation. You are. You're the light in this darkness. You're the hope to the hopeless. You're the peace to the restless. You are. There is no one like our God. There is no one like our God. Greater things have yet to come. Greater things are still to be done in this city. Greater things. Greater things have yet to come. Greater things are still to be done in this city. You're the God of the city. You're the king of these people. You're the Lord of this nation. You are. You're the light in this darkness. You're the hope to the hopeless. You're the peace to the restless. You are. There is no one like our God. There is no one like our God. There was no one like our God. There is no one like our God. Greater things, greater things have yet to come. Greater things are still to be done in the city. Greater things are still to be done in this city. 
there is no one like our God. There is no one like you, God. Greater things have yet to come. Greater things are still to be done. is good and all the time this is buenos todo el tiempo todo el tiempo this is buenos come on guys going to be reading todo el tiempo we're going to be reading from uh, acts chapter 17 verses 22 to 34 acts 17 22 through 34 i learned uh, one nice thing about preaching this several times so I learned in the last service that there are two or three words in here that I cannot pronounce. So uh, just get ready for that. Uh, anyway, <laughs> let's listen to Paul as he, uh, as he, or I'm sorry, let's listen to Luke as he writes to us about Paul in the book of Acts. Then Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription to an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you, the God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence in the boundaries of the places where they would live, so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from each one of us, for in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your own poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. When they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some scoffed, but others said, we will hear you again about this. At that point, Paul left them, but some of them joined him and became believers, including Dionysus, an Aragopite, probably, maybe not pronounced like that, woman named Damaris and others with them. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Areopagite, I don't know. Areopagite. I'm going to get it next service. For the next service. Besides the fact that there's tough words in there, that's not, that's, that's not, anything a problem with what Paul is saying because Paul is very clear in what he's saying. We're going to look at this a little bit. But as I was reading this, as I was studying this text and, and getting ready for, uh, for um, 
uh, the sermon, uh, something kept popping in my head. I grew up in, in the uh, late 60s. Well, actually, I grew up throughout the whole 60s. I grew up through the 60s and the, and the early 70s, and I was exposed to what I believe was some of the greatest American and Great Britain rock and roll history. And it, it appears that every now and again some of that is wedged in my brain somewhere and pops out because as I'm reading this text, I, I remembered a song from 1970 by the band Badfinger. Who knows Bad, 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 all right, old, I mean, good, Badfinger. Uh, they came out with a song that was written by, uh, by Paul McCartney, uh, 1970, and it was called Come and Get It. Who remembers, who, can you sing the song, can you sing the, go ahead, man, Let, let's hear it. Here it is, come and get it. Better hurry, cause it might not last. All right, good, good, thanks. <laughs> yeah, you know, you remember that, that, that catch you do. It, 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 it. That lyric, as I was reading this text, kept running through my head. If you want it, here it is, come and get it. As I, Because I think this is, this is what Paul was talking about as he was talking to the Athenians in, in our, our text this morning. You see, Paul had been walking around Athens, and he was taking in all the sights and sounds. He was looking at all the stuff going on. He was exploring their, their culture. And, and, and although Athens was nothing like it had been in the days of Socrates, the evidence of its former greatness was, was all around. It was all over the place. In many ways, Athens had the grandest history of any city of the ancient world. Paul had walked through this amazing city and he'd seen the evidence of their search for the eternal, their search for the, for the beautiful, their search for, for life meaning. He'd seen the glistening temples raised to Diana and Apollo and Zeus and Poseidon. He looked around at the beautiful artistic Doric temples. He, he saw the Acropolis and, and, and the Parthenon and many other altars and temples to various gods. The statues of marble, gold, and silver were among some of the most beautiful and perfect ever made anywhere. Athens had been the home of the great philosophers from Socrates to Plato, the great dramatists uh, Aeschylus, Sophocles, and Aristophanes wrote their magnificent works, work, magnificent works right there in Athens. Theirs was a golden culture, perhaps the most shining society the world has ever known. But 400 years had passed since Socrates had stood where Paul now stood. Those centuries had seen Athens fall from its former glory. Now so-called philosophers loitered about the city and uh, trying to imitate the mental greatness of Socrates. But our scriptures tell us just the verse before we started reading, actually, that they spent their time in nothing but telling or hearing of something new. In other words, they stood around trying to think about what might be the next greatest thing and, and just talk about stuff. Paul had even seen a monument dedicated to an unknown God. But in spite of all these efforts to find beauty and truth and meaning, their urge to find God had not been satisfied. They had looked everywhere, they had turned over every stone and still had not found the one true God. But Paul, Paul had found him on the road to Damascus. You know that story, right, where he meets the risen Jesus and Jesus, is, the light from Jesus is so bright, the glory of Jesus is so bright that Paul is knocked to the ground and he's blinded. Paul knew Jesus. Paul saw how badly the Athenians wanted to find the truth, and he had the truth. It was as, as if Paul was saying, if you want it, here it is. Come and get it. Our society today is not much different than, than that of the Athens of Paul's day. Our once great society used to be the leader in manufacturing. A couple years ago, we lost that to China was home to the greatest minds on earth, Einstein, Franklin, Henry Ford, Thomas Edison, Emerson, Thoreau, Walt Disney, right? Walt, don't laugh, Walt Disney, Martin Luther King Jr., great minds. 
We once could be called a Christian nation, but we have lost that title as, as it's now reported that less than 20%, less than 20% of Americans now regularly attend church. There's a couple of empty seats near yet, I think. Our society is quickly heading the way of ancient Greece and Rome as we search for meaning in life in all the wrong places. Reminds me of a country western song, actually. Yeah, okay, I'm not alone. Our families are, are disintegrating into dysfunction at an alarming rate. Suicide rates have been climbing since the year 2000, suggesting that more and more people have simply lost hope, have lost hope. Like Paul, we have what the broken and hurting people in our communities need. We have what they need here in the church. If you want it, here it is. Come and get it. But what do we do about that? What do we do about that? We have it, they want it. What do we do about that? Well, I think if we look at, that was a rhetorical question, but go ahead. <laughs> I, I think if we look at Paul and what he did, it will give us something to, 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 uh, to go on. The first thing Paul did was to identify the positive. He didn't go and look at the negative of the culture, but he went and he looked at the positive and lifted up the positive. He didn't focus on the fact that the Athenians were looking in, in all the wrong places for what was lacking in their lives. He focused on the fact that they were looking. They were looking. He says this to them, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully, at the objects of your worship. You see, he looked at what they were doing, what they were thinking. We have a, 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 a generation coming up that is extremely spiritual. Maybe not religious, not in the sense that we think of it, but extremely spiritual. They are looking and starving for the reality of the God we know. Not the way we might do it, but they're looking. Paul got to know this culture. He was interested in them. He was concerned about them. He looked carefully at them. If we're going to offer what we have to, to people who are broken by this life and don't know where to look for healing, we need to make the effort to get to understand them, to get to know them. We need to understand what their lives are like. We need to look carefully at who they are and what they're doing to find meaning in life. We need to show them that we truly are concerned about them, that we truly do care about them. As it's so often been said, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care, they, and rightly so. Building relationships with people outside of our understanding of religion, outside of Christianity, is part of God's plans for his disciples. If you remember in Luke, Jesus is asked what the greatest commandments are, and, and in Luke he says it's to love the Lord with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, actually to love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and to love your neighbors as yourself. Do you, know what, do you remember what happened next, right after that? The question was that, thank you. The question was asked, who is my neighbor? And then what happened? What story were we told? What parable? The Good Samaritan, right. We were told the Good Samaritan story. So we, we got to hear that. Now that Good Samaritan story uses a Samaritan as the hero of the story, as, as the representation of what a good neighbor looks like. And Jesus is basically telling the, the scribe who was trying to, to make himself look good and say, who is my neighbor? He was, he, was, he was showing him that your neighbor is everybody. And you need to get to know your neighbor. And you need to serve your neighbor. And you need to love your neighbor. So, so God is interested in, in us getting to know these people who we might see as different. The Jews hated the Samaritans, and Jesus used them as the hero of the story. We need to get to know these people in our communities who are hurting, who need the love of God in their lives. Jesus calls us to build relationships with those who do not know God so that we can share the God of hope 
the God of love, the God of mercy, the God of new beginnings with them. The next thing Paul does is he finds a way to transition to an explanation of, of this God he knows so well to a people who do not know God. As I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription to an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. Paul found a way. Paul found a way to introduce God into the conversation he was having with those around them. They wanted to hear. When we're talking with our neighbors and friends with whom we have now built a relationship, whose lives we have now intersected with and intertwined with, who, who, now, who we now know uh, and, and are concerned about, and they know that we are concerned about them and that we truly care about them, there will be opportunities that arise where we can offer to them what we have. Here it is. Come and get it. When I talk with people who are struggling with life, I tell them, about my reliance on God when I'm struggling with life. I'm honest with them that, you know, my life has ups and downs. I have crises that come in and out. Just because I'm a Christian and just because I'm a pastor doesn't mean that life doesn't stink sometimes. But I talk to them about how I rely on God. But you know what? Most of the time, the answer I get from my unchurched friends is, is I, don't, I don't believe in God. I don't believe in God. But that's okay. That's okay. I, I, uh, my response to them is, is always the same when they say, I don't believe in God. I say, tell me about this God you don't believe in. Tell me what you're talking about. And then I very carefully listen to them describe this God that they don't believe in. I want to hear their understanding. I want to know what God they're talking about because usually when they're finished, I can honestly say, I don't believe in that God either. Most people who have not met God through Jesus Christ have an incredible jumble of ideas about what God is, who God is, all, all these things. I don't, who knows where they get this data that's stored in their, their head Mainstream movies, listening to too much 60s and 70s rock and roll, I don't know, TV shows, uh, media headlines, uh, misguided know-it-alls who are on their friends list. You know, they, they hear this stuff from somewhere and they've got this image of a God that looks nothing like the God we serve as Christians who know him through Jesus Christ. And so that always opens the way for me to describe to them the God I know through Jesus. And I'm not talking about some deep theological discussion because I went to seminary and I got some words that I haven't used in years that I can throw at them. I'm not talking about, I'm talking about sharing with them the God I know through Jesus Christ and my experience in life with a God of love, a God of mercy, a God of forgiveness, a God who cares, a God who, who gives freely that we might have a relationship with him, a God who, who loves us so much that, that he'll do anything to be in relationship with us. Almost every time I talk about that God, the God and Father of Jesus Christ, they, they, they tell me that they haven't heard of God described that way before. And it opens the door. They want to hear more. And as we saw at the end of, of, of the verse uh, with, with Paul, yeah, in the end of the verse with, with Paul, it, it said that some of them scoffed. And I'm off track, by the way, so don't try and find me uh, for the slide changes. <laughs> that some, of the, some of them scoffed, uh, but others said, we'll hear you again on this. And it, it kind of opens that door when, you, when you, you're honest with them about this God you've experienced in your life and how he's worked in your life. One of the attitude shifts I believe that we as Christians need to make when we're telling, talking to people about God is to stop trying to, to stop using the, I want you to believe me because I want to prove that I'm right and you're wrong. It, it's, stop being an American competitive person. Stop being so competitive. Stop trying to prove you're right and they're wrong because that's not the purpose of witnessing. 
That's not the purpose of the gospel message. The purpose of the gospel message is to show how much you care about them in their brokenness, in their hurting, in their pain. If we would change our attitude from one of, you know, I want to prove I'm right and you're wrong to one of I want to help change your life because I know you're hurting. I, I, I know the pain you're in. I, I, I know the, the things that you deal with because I've gotten to know you. You see, it's not about proving we're right and they're wrong. It's a, the concern for them that should drive us to share the gospel message. It's not some ploy to increase the number of people in our churches on Sunday morning. It's honest caring about their lives, their need for wholeness and healing from a world that is beating them but they will never get that healing if we do not share with them what we have. Here it is. Come and get it. Statistical studies show that 82% of unchurched people are at least somewhat likely, next slide I think, not likely to attend church if invited. Two-thirds of unchurched people are willing to receive information about a church from family members. And 56% are willing to receive information about a church from a friend. However, statistics also show that only about 2%, 2% of church members invite an unchurched person to church. That means 98% of active church members never, never invite an unchurched friend to church. 98%. In our text this morning, Paul is not focusing, I'm sorry, Paul is not forcing himself on the Athenians. They wanted to hear what he had to say. He showed an interest in them, and they wanted to hear what he had to say. He wasn't trying to sell them on anything. He was offering them hope. He was not practicing spiritual arm twisting. He was telling them what God meant to him and what God could mean to them. He didn't come across arrogantly saying, I'm right and you're wrong. His testimony to them was a friendly exchange and a positive witness. He showed that he cared about them as people, not simply trying to put another notch in his Bible. He began where they were, discussing their needs. And as I said before, this outcome was not 100% of that that 100% of those who heard him went along with him. We don't hear about thousands who, who became Christians because of this. It tells us that some scoffed. Some of them scoffed. Some doubted. But some believed and they received the healing, hope, and a new beginning that they needed. You learn quickly as a pastor that not everyone will receive what it is you have to say. Not everybody's going to hear you. you. You're not going to be treated with respect by everybody. And that includes people inside the church. I think I've got some witnesses, right? Um, anyway, but that's okay. It's okay. I don't care if I get disrespected by people inside or outside the church. I'm not called to convince anyone about anything. That's not what God has called me to do. God hasn't made me the Holy Spirit. God hasn't called me to convince people. I'm called to offer God's good news, the, the, the gospel message, the, the way of life that God desires for us that we might be healed to a, a, a world that is hurting and broken, a world that God loved so much, if you can fill in the rest, that he gave his only son a God who loves more than anything. People make their own choices and they have their own responses. But just like me, you too are called. You're not called to convince anyone about anything. You're not called to that. But you are called, however, by God through your baptism to offer to everyone the opportunity to know God as you know God. Not some theological nonsense that, that only makes sense to a few of us who, who are weird, but, but you're called to tell the experience 
that you have with God in your life. Why is it you come to church? What has God done for you? What, what hope do you have in serving the risen Savior? What's your personal experience about the love of the church in your life and the people who gather together on Sunday morning? The people that have your back because we all believe in the same God that, that cares for us. You are called through your baptism to share the gospel message of Jesus Christ. It is a universal calling to all those who have been baptized. You are called to offer God to a hurting and broken world. You are called to declare to a hurting world, if you want it, here it is. Come and get it. Amen. Let's pray. Gracious God, you love us so much that you gave, you gave your son and through the giving of your son, you have saved us. You have made us whole. You have, you can have reconciled us in relationship with you. And through your love and grace and mercy and power, you give us the opportunity to, to start over again. You forgive us from our sins and our brokenness. You heal our lives. You give us purpose and meaning. You give us joy in the midst of crisis and brokenness. Lord, we pray that you continue to heal our land, to, to give us love, to allow us to love others, to share that with others. Lord, help us to speak life into other people's lives as we share the message of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's stand and sing together. Some days life feels perfect, other days it just ain't working. The good, the bad, the right, the wrong, everything in between. It's crazy, amazing, we can turn our heart through the words we say. Mountains crumble with every syllable, hope can live or die. Speak life, speak life, to the deadest, darkest night. Speak life, speak life, when the sun won't shine and you don't know why. Look into the eyes of the broken hearted, watch them come alive as soon as you speak hope, you speak love, you speak. You speak light, oh, 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 oh. You speak light, oh, 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 oh. Some days the tongue gets twisted, other days my thoughts just fall apart. I do, I don't, I will, I won't, like I'm drowning in the deep. Well, it's crazy to imagine words from my lips as the arms of compassion. Mountains crumble with every syllable. Hope can live or die. Speak lies, speak lies to the deadest, darkest night. Speak lies, speak lies when the sun won't shine and you don't know why. Look into the eyes of the brokenhearted. Watch them come alive as soon as you speak hope, you speak love, you speak. You speak life, oh, 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 oh. You speak life, oh, 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 oh. Lift your head a little higher. Spread the love like fire. Hope will fall like rain when you speak life with the words you say. Raise your thoughts a little higher. Use your words to inspire. Joy will fall like rain when you speak life with the broken heart and watch it come alive as soon as you speak hope you speak love you speak you speak life oh 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 
life feels perfect. God by presenting God his tithes and our offerings. Now I see Bob's not here. I, I knew that. I knew of it. Bob, Bob always does the gospel. Oh, you got people? Oh, I'm sorry, Alan. I didn't give you enough credit. Thank you. Thank you. But Bob is always doing the gospel thing. If he's not fishing for people, he's fishing for fish, which is where he is now. And that's a cool. That's cool. All right. So it, we're going to offer God our, our tithes, our offerings, and this is our opportunity to share back with God some of the bounty that he has given us. If we truly are to be the hands and feet of God, then we need to return some of what God has given us to be stewards over back to the church so that we can go out and do ministry and mission in the world around us and, and change some lives. Uh, I talked last week about the fact that we were able to help a young woman and her teenage son uh, get into uh, some housing that she would not have been able to if, we, if it was not for your generosity and our ability to do those things. And those stories happen uh, uh, not every week, but, but they, they happen quite often. But it's because of what you do that we can be the church in this community. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Almighty God, we thank you for all that you have done for us. We thank you for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, but also the material blessings which you pour out upon us. Lord, accept back these offerings, multiply them, that we might truly be your church in this community doing your will. For I pray this in the name of Jesus Christ and for the sake of his holy church. Amen. You may be seated. Come to our time of praise and prayer, an opportunity not only to uh, talk about the needs we have before God, but share with what we've seen God doing in our lives or in the lives of those around us in, in the last few weeks. Um, anybody have a, a story for me where you've seen God at work? Anybody back there? Yes, please. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I, I support, support that all year long. So that's why he embraced our ball every year in March. But um, they honor different kids that are bat either battling cancer in remission or have unfortunately passed away. And this week we got word that one of the honorees, actually from a local area, a young girl, she is um, two years the date from her last chemo treatment, and she's been cancer free for two years. Wow, wow. praise God. God. Amen. 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 I'm going to uh, share with you some, some of our prayer concerns, concerns, and then I'll ask if you have others. Uh, I want to lift up to you the fact that this is annual conference week, and that may mean nothing to you, or it may mean a lot to you, depending on what you know about the United Methodist Church, but uh, annual conference, just like it says, is a once-a-year meeting. It's a conference of all clergy and uh, a lay person from each church to uh, represent 
the laity, and we basically meet for three days uh, discussing the future of the church in, in, in the Greater New Jersey Annual Conference, which is a, also a geographical area. It's all of New Jersey, parts of Rockland, Suffern, and Orange County, New York, and I think there's two churches in Pike County, Pennsylvania that are part of our annual conference. Uh, and so all of these churches gather together and, and deal with legislation, uh, with uh, changes in, in the way we do business and other things uh, to, to better serve God is obviously the idea to better serve God. But it's a, it's a long time and it, it, it's, it's not always easy and some of the discussions can be pretty uh, hard to handle uh, because we get passionate about our beliefs and, and where we stand on, on different things. So be in prayer for, for the annual conference these next three days. Uh, there's actually uh, four of us from this church going for different reasons. Uh, Lynn Caterson is going, uh, Kyung Suk is going, um, and um, um, right here, Becky, Becky Lincoln is going, and, and myself. Uh, and so uh, uh, be in prayer for us and for annual conference uh, as we are away from home for those three days. Uh, we're also uh, continuing to pray for Diana. Uh, we're praying for, um, I can't look at it and say it. On it. I looked at it. Sue Wright Meyer's mom's name is Ramon. It's spelled in the French way R A Y M O N D E, and I can't get Ramon out of that. Thank you, Ramon. Um, you know, we've been praying for her. She fell and broke a bone in her hand while she fell over the weekend and broke a hip. Uh, and it's a hip she had broken in the past. So uh, she's still in the hospital, I believe, and, and uh, going to have to have uh, surgery probably. Uh, we're praying for Kathy Lynn, uh, that's Jean and Paul Scott's daughter, uh, Marge Beckler, Don Dearborn, Doris Whitaker, Bev Hewer, Buddy Goodman, John Daniel, Rick Korig, Paul Gorman, Denny Brunk, Dan Favara, Carol DeLaurentis, Larry Haynes, David Parkhurst, Ellie Keeping, and baby Brian Southley. Are there other prayer concerns that need to be lifted up at this time? Please, please. Uh, can we pray for our church that's hosting the annual conference? Oh, well, absolutely. <laughs> not, not too preoccupied with any conference. Yes, yes family, family promises here this week. week and we certainly are going to be. Continue to pray for family promises and those who are, are, are not only uh, in your care, but those who are caring for you. Yes, yes, please. Pray for the lost. Absolutely. absolutely. And pray for us Christians when we have an opportunity to tell anybody about Christ, we will do that. Amen. That's our job. I, I, heard, I heard that, that recently. recently. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and all you got to do is get on your knees and ask him to save you. Amen. 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 Thank you. Yes. Um, my friend Dina and her son Lincoln, who has a mitochondrial disease, are really suffering lately. Dina and Lincoln. Thank you. Uh, yes, Paul. 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 Let's, Let's go, go to the board. Gracious Almighty God, we thank you that you love this world so much. You love your creation and your people so much that you have given us a way to be in relationship with you. Through your son, Jesus Christ. That as we call upon his name, our sins are forgiven and we are placed in relationship with you. Lord, I truly believe that the purpose of our creation was to love you and to be loved by you. 
in that our sin separates us from you so that we cannot fulfill the, the purpose of our creation. And in that, we are broken and empty. In that, there is a space within us that needs to be filled. And unless we know, we'll never find it. Lord, thank you for making yourself known to us through your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for the way that we came with all of our own individual stories to be in relationship with you and the impact that that has made on our lives. But Lord God, never let us forget that you call us to continue to witness to the grace and love that you have through your son Jesus Christ to others. Lord, help us to remember that you, your understanding of disciples is to make new disciples of Jesus Christ, your son, for the transformation of the world. Give us the strength and the courage to share the good news, the hope of the nations, the words that bring healing to lives that are hurting. Lord, we lift up to you this morning lives that are hurting. You know their need. You've heard the names called out and perhaps names hidden deep within our heart that have not been called out. You have known through your Holy Spirit. Lord, hear our prayers for those who are sick. Hear our prayers for those who are lonely. Hear our prayers for those who are grieving. Keep safe those who are traveling. Protect those who serve, especially those who are protecting our freedom and are serving in places that are dangerous, far away from home and from family. Give them courage and strength. Bring them back safely. Lord, we lift up the church to you, and not just this church. We lift up all the churches in this community that preach the gospel message of your son, Jesus Christ. We pray, dear God, that you pour out your Holy Spirit upon them, that the word that is preached this morning may be your word and may reach into the hearts of those who hear it, that your people might be strengthened, transformed into the image of your son, Jesus Christ and might go out with passion to share the gospel message. Lord, we pray for revival in this community through all your churches. In all of this, we pray in the name of your Son, our Savior, as we reach across to one another and pray the prayer that he has taught us, your Son, Jesus Christ. We now pray these words. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 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 thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Forgive us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory of God. All right, let's go out on a... These are the days of Elijah. These are the days of Elijah, declaring the word of the Lord. And these are the days of your servant Moses, righteousness being restored. And though these are days of great trial, of famine and darkness and sword, Still we are the voice in the desert crying, prepare ye the way. Behold he comes, behold he comes, riding on a cloud, shining like the sun.
sun at the trumpet call lift your voice it's a year of jubilee and out of zion's hill salvation come and these are the days of ezekiel and these are the days of ezekiel the dry bones becoming as flesh and these are the days of your servant david rebuilding the temple of praise and these are the days of the harvest who oh, the fields are all white in your world and we are the laborers in your No God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. There is no God like Jehovah. There's 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 no There's no God like Jehovah. 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 Behold, He comes riding on the clouds, shining like the sun. At the trumpet call, lift your voice. It's a year of jubilee, and now the Zion till salvation. Behold, He comes. Behold, he comes, riding on the cloud, shining like the sun, at the trumpet call, lift your voice, it's a year of jubilee, and out of Zion's hill south, sing, lift your voice, lift your voice, it's a year of jubilee, and now the And now may God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit make his face to shine upon you, hold you in the palm of his hand, and grant you the peace that comes from knowing that God has loved you so much that he has sent his only son to bring you back in relationship with him. But the son sends you to bring others into that same relationship. So, go and do risky things in his name. Amen. Have a great week. Please join us next Sunday morning at our new time, 10, 15 a.m.